by district playoff action, Westlaco versus Edinburgh. Two proud traditional powerhouses with some postseason history. These two squared off in the first round in what turned out to be the last game ever at Barbie Field back in 1987. Then, in 1998, both saw each other in the by district once again, this time at Edinburgh. Two hard-fought defensive battles with the Bobcats coming out victorious in both games. 24 years later, they meet once again. These two actually squared off in non-district earlier in the year. The running game was key to the victory. Jeremy Perez starts the first drive strong as he scampers for nine yards to the Edinburgh 42. Few plays later, Westlaco goes for the jugular. Andres Silvubra lets it go to Mackay Jones. Good coverage, but Jones comes down with it. 31 yards to the Edinburgh 11. Ball at the four now, needing three yards for a first. Panthers go on fourth down, and Silvubra under heavy pressure has to get rid of it, and the pass is incomplete. Ball turned over on downs, but Westlaco gets the ball right back after a three and out, and they go back to the running game. Perez, right side, fights for nine yards. Few plays later, Selpubra on a play action, goes to Donnie Lincoln, the senior. Stiff arms a defender, barrels through defenders, 13 yards to the Bobcat 39. Panthers moving the ball, but face another fourth down. This time, needing 16 yards, Selpubra connects with Roy Stroman for eight, two possessions deep into Edinburgh territory, zero points. We move to the second, first play of the period. Bobcats on the read option, JT Santa Maria keeps it, follows his blockers in heavy duty traffic, gets free and nothing but turf in front of him. Edinburgh strikes first in this by district playoff. Seven to nothing is your score. Later in the quarter, Bobcats put together a nice six minute 12 play drive, which leads to a 24 yard field goal by Juan Davila. Westlaco now with a 10 nothing deficit, but here come the Panthers. It starts with Westlaco facing a third and nine. Silpubra can't find a receiver, so he takes off and look at his athleticism. Nice move, fights for yardage and gets 10 yards first down. Four plays later, ball at the Edinburgh 47. Silpubra connects with Roy Stroman to the 37. Then Silpubra on the keeper, eludes a tackler, stretches the ball, just gets enough for the first down. Another third down conversion. Next play, watch this. Selpubra with some time, looks, lets it go, three defenders there, one misses, Stroman hauls it in, gets by the other two defenders and takes it to the house. 27 yards, Panthers finally on the board, 10 to seven, and that is your halftime score. Third quarter, and how about that Panther defense? All season coming through with big plays. Gavin Silva with a pass deflection on third and five. Bobcats have to punt. Later in the quarter, it's Jeremiah Vega, top of your screen, comes on block and sacks new quarterback Ryan Abrego. This comes on third and nine. Westlaco gets the ball back, already in Edinburgh territory, and it's Jeremy Perez, nine yards to the Bobcat 34. Few plays later, ball at the 27. Selpubra was awesome protection, looks all over the field. He points to Perez, and he finds him open down the field, forced out of bounds to the three. Panthers can't punch it in, but it leads to a 25-yard field goal by Angel Lopez. We are tied at 10. We go to the fourth. Westlaco puts another solid drive together. Go for a 46-yard field goal against a soft win. Has the accuracy, but it's no good. Lands in front of the goal post. We remain tied at 10. Bobcats now go to their ball control offense. With Santa Maria out, they go to Noel Serna. He gets enough for a first down. But after the tackle, a late flag comes in at 15 more on a personal foul penalty. Edinburgh now in business in Westlaco territory. Few plays later, from the 38, Abrego on the keeper. He's met by Gavin Silva, who strips the ball, and we have a fumble. Jeremiah Vega in perfect position is right there for the recovery. Panthers end the drive. Late in the fourth, Edinburgh comes with a new quarterback, Johnny Islas, with pressure from Darren Hanks. Has to let it go, and Braulio Peña, in perfect position, comes up with the interception. Second of the season, Westlaco with a chance to win it. Take over with just over a minute left. Under a minute now, Panthers trying to get into field goal range. Selpubra finds Mackay Jones, seven yards to the Bobcat 26. Coach Stroman calls timeout. 
Fourth and two, 36 seconds. Angel Lopez comes in for a 43 yard field goal. First one was short, this one is long enough, but wide right, no good. So we go into overtime. Edinburgh gets the ball first. And on third and two, how about this play by Braulio Pena? Stops a big fullback for a one yard loss. Huge play, and you'll see why in a minute. Bobcat settle for a 35 yard field goal, and it's good. Edinburgh regains the lead, 13 to 10. It's Westlico's turn now. Jeremy Perez, 152 yards rushing, picks up nine yards here to the Bobcat 13. Few plays later, Roy Stroman on a jet sweep, follows his blockers to the seven. This sets up a third and four, and the Panthers come with a play action. Selpubra then rolls to his right and finds Gabriel Rentaria Garcia in the corner of the end zone. Westlaco wins. Look at the celebration. 16 to 13, Westlaco Panthers in a classic. 2022 by district champions. Reaction after the game. You guys answered the question that I had all week long. Let me tell you what the question I had all week long. I didn't know if you guys were still wanting to play football or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly, I thought, you know what? These guys are already getting tired of football. They're, they're ready to go on to the next sport. But you know what? You know what? You answered my question right now. You solidified it. You validated it tonight. Walk us through that last play. What was going through your mind and how were you able to haul in that touchdown pass? You know, we had to score. We knew we, all had, to, we, knew we had to score as an offense and to just get the win. And I wanted to do everything in my powers to score. And everybody, I know everybody else wasn't ready to go home. And we just all gave it our all and then showed it right there. You guys were down most of the game and then you guys tied it. And you guys pull it off in overtime. So how does it feel to be in a game like this and to become by district champs? Uh, it's definitely one good feeling, man. Came, overcame a lot of adversity. And yeah, it was just an overall good team win and everybody did good. We knew we had to stop them. The adrenaline the was so high and we, we just knew we had to stop them because we didn't want to go home. We want to play. We would keep want to, we want to practice next week. We just love this game, man. We love this game. All right, congratulations.